What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchUpEssentials.com back with another SketchUp speed model for you. So in this video I wanted to create an interior speed model. So something on the inside that uh, we can use maybe as kind of a rendering scene in the future and I wanted to kind of walk you through what I was doing while I was doing it. Um, before we get started, today's video is brought to you by my supporters on Patreon. Patreon is the website where you can support creators that you like on YouTube. So if that's something you're interested in and you want to support the show, make sure you check out that link in the notes down below. Now let's go ahead and just jump into it. So in this video, what I did is I went through and I modeled an interior scene in a very simple kind of apartment loft space. And so I just want to walk you through some of the steps on that. I have sped this up to keep this video from being like an hour long, but I'm going to give, try to give you an idea of what I was doing as I was doing this. And so what I was doing in this case is I came through and the first thing I always do is I model out my floor space. So I model this in here to see what the size of the space is going to be. Once you get the size of your space figured out, then you can start roughing out walls and everything else. And so one thing I'm trying to get better about is grouping my walls as I go so that they don't merge with each other because what happens is this gets really complicated and a little bit difficult in order for you to uh, in order for you to uh, work with your geometry in here if you don't group it because everything just starts merging and then it can be really difficult to make changes. Um, so what I did in this case is I grouped my walls first then I came in and I roughed out the size of my window opening and I will note this is based on an image I found online um, so I'm matching up with that a little bit but I'm also uh, kind of adjusting the space to match up with what I want it to be as well um, but what I did in this case is this has like a steel plate on the outside of it and so what I did is I selected did these edges I went in and kind of redrew um, this steel piece and I selected these edges and I offset them inside and then I used the push pull tool in order to extrude them out and so what I did is I just used that in order to create this steel plate that was going to be in the opening And so what I did then is I started working on the actual window inside the opening. And so I drew a face in here, and then once I drew the face, what I did is I started splitting it up so that I could create different mullions inside of it. And one thing I'm trying to be better about is organizing things in my outliner as I go. So you can see I was going through and organizing my groups. But one thing I did in here is I'm using the extension Lattice Maker, which I've talked about before. I'll try to remember to leave a link down below. But what this extension allows me to do is that allows me to take this face and basically offset it and create glass panes on the inside. So this is a really good like window or glass creation extension. And uh, sometimes you get some kind of weird issues with uh, the way the faces kind of split up. I was able to fix that. But then what I did is I just came in here and so you can see how for some reason when I drew across these it just wasn't allowing me to select the individual faces so I had to delete those out and then draw them back in but once I did that I could use lattice maker in order to kind of uh, offset and extrude these so that I so that I had kind of a glass kind of curtain wall looking assembly in here and so there was just a little bit of cleanup with this steel plate face so I just drew in some edges in order to make this a complete face um, for some reason the edges weren't showing up down at the bottom and then all I was trying to do was kind of line this up with the middle of the opening and I moved it in and out a little bit but what I ended up doing is just extending the floor material out um, because I wasn't quite sure how this window would sit in this opening but then I just added some black material at the top of this window and uh, I was good to go on that piece all right, and so with this, I would basically roughed out the space. It's not a very complex space. I've got kind of an opening in here and everything else, so it was time to start looking at materials. And so what I did in this case is I created my own material using a uh, texture I downloaded from polygon.com. Um, so I'm trying to use kind of higher resolution textures in this case because I'm thinking about going out and rendering this a little bit later. So I'm trying to use materials that are going to look good and uh, that are going to look good when they're rendered. And so a lot of the time that means bringing in your own materials and creating those rather than uh, using the SketchUp default materials just because those are kind of low resolution and they don't look super good. And so what I went ahead and did is I went ahead and added a ceiling in here as well. And then I wanted to apply kind of an older wood material to it. And so I used an 
older material or an older wood plank material um, in order to uh, texture this piece. And so what that allowed me to do is that allowed me to come in here and create kind of an older, like worn looking space. And one thing I had to do was come in here and apply this to this face rather than the outside of the group. And I, then I could right click on this and use the position textures tools in order to rotate this so that it was facing the other direction, which was the direction I wanted it to face because that's the way that like a wood plank ceiling would run in here. So once I had my ceiling in here, then I went through and I started taking a look at the walls and what I was going to put out there. And in this case, I added kind of a white brick material. And uh, I actually came back and changed this later just because I didn't like the way that the brick material looked. But for right now, that's what I applied. And so the other thing I did is I came in here and I started modeling out um, I started modeling out the different wood pieces, the beams that were going to be support beams in here. And I can't remember what dimension I settled on. I think I settled on like a four by eight or something like that. But one thing I did is when I created this, I made it a component. The reason I made it a component is because then I could make copies of it using the move tool. So in this case, I uh, use the move tool in copy mode and use the divide key um, in order to create copies between these two points. But now since I use that same material or since I use that same component, um, what I could do is I could come in and I could apply a material to the outside of this one component. Um, in this case, I used kind of an old beam and plank material that I downloaded. Um, but what I could do is I could use this kind of old, or I could use this material on one component, and you can see how that actually updated on all of them. So that's the powerful use of components is when you copy, make a copy of one, um, or when you have multiple copies of one and you change it, all the others change as well. And so I started playing around with camera angles a little bit, but one thing I did is I used the zoom tool. Um, when you click on the magnifying glass and uh, then you hold the shift key and you click and drag, you can adjust the field of view of your view inside your model. And so that allowed me to get the whole interior of this view inside my viewport. Um, so changing the field of view in a space like this can be really important. But then really for the rest of this, I spent a lot of time just going through and finding different uh, things in the 3D warehouse that I could then use to furnish my model. And if you've ever done that before, you know that can be a little bit tricky just because there's a lot of kind of junk models in there or a lot of models that haven't been modeled with smart modeling practices or anything like that. But you can see what I was doing as I came in here is I started putting all of these on one layer. That way I could turn them all on and off. So I just put them in a furnishings layer and you can see how even when you bring in things like a rug, they can be scaled to like a huge size. So you just have to be really careful with what you bring in from the 3D warehouse. Um, but for anyone that's done this before, this is probably the most time consuming part of this whole thing is just going through and finding models that fit in here. So there's a lot of trial and error and looking at a model and seeing if it makes sense, if it fits, that kind of thing. So you can see how I had to try a couple different couches and things like that. And really what I'm looking for when I'm downloading models from the 3D warehouse, and you can see how I brought in my default model as kind of a scale check. Um, so to see what size the couch should be, that's always a good trick is to use your uh, default model to see how big things should be because the scale isn't always right in the 3D warehouse. But what I'm looking for when I download things in the 3D warehouse is I'm looking for things that are high polygon enough to look realistic, but not so high polygon that they're gonna just kill your model from a speed standpoint. So there's really kind of a trial and error and also just a uh, just a personal preference type standpoint when you're doing something like this. So, um, you know, I mean, you, you kind of have to figure out what works for you and what uh, what's going to make your renderings look the way that you want them to look. So there's a certain level of detail that you want, but there's also a certain level of detail that's not really necessary. And so the other thing that I did is I brought in a table and chairs model and I adjusted the wood material that was on there. And you can see how I applied one of the SketchUp default wood materials. I may swap that out a little bit later, but you can go through and you can reapply different materials to make all of these models look the way that you want them to look. So then I started looking at lighting and that was, that was kind of interesting. I actually found a really great, um, 
hanging light package that's super detailed. Um, so it really kind of had the look that I want, this Edison lamp. And I can't read the name of the person that put that in the 3D warehouse, but you can see how that's actually detailed out with like a bulb and then uh, the little piece inside the bulb that lights up. So it's a really detailed model. And so what I did in this case is I went through and I selected the geometry on the end to kind of extend this up so that it looks like it's hanging from the ceiling. And then you can move this up and have it kind of stick through the ceiling after you do that. It's not really that big of a deal because you're only rendering the interior, not the exterior. Now, if you're doing like a complete building model, you do have to be a little bit more careful in that case. But um, in this case, it didn't really matter because I'm really just trying to get a rendering basically from this view. And so going through and finding more lamps and things like that, it's really kind of a challenge to find them detailed out in a way where they're going to look really realistic. And then I also needed to add a plant around the exterior and plants can be a little bit tricky too. Um, so I think I found a pretty decent plant in here after a while. Um, I have heard on Facebook that there's a group that's coming out with like SketchUp plants. So like a plants library for SketchUp that are supposed to be really detailed. I don't know too much about it right now, but I'm really excited about that because um, anyone that's worked with plants in SketchUp knows that that can be a little bit of a painful process. Um, and you can see how I didn't really like the way that the white brick was looking, so I swapped this out with a red brick. But then the other thing that I'm trying to do with my renderings is I'm really trying to pay attention to detail. And in this case, paying attention to detail meant that I wanted to put place settings on this table and instead of just looking, making it empty. Um, because if you have an empty table, then it doesn't look right. It looks like some stuff should be on the table that isn't. And so what I did is I came in here and um, place these on the table so that the table would look used and lived in. And so that's just something you need to think about when you're uh, furnishing a model like this is what would this look like if people were living in there? Like if everything's perfectly clean, then uh, it just kind of looks wrong to the brain. So the last thing I did is I just added a piece of art to this wall. And then the last step was just going through and unhiding my beams that were in here. So you can see how the beams were hidden. And I came in here and unhid those. Then once I did that, I'm really happy with the result I was able to get in here. So probably the next step is to take this and uh, export it to a rendering software, either V-Ray or Inkscape. So keep an eye out for that video. So that's where I'm going to end this video. Leave a comment below and let me know what you thought. What do you think about this format? Did you find it helpful? I just love having that SketchUp conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new SketchUp content every week. Um, if you like what I'm doing on this channel, please consider supporting me on Patreon. Every little bit helps, even if it's only a dollar a month. So make sure you check out that link in the notes down below. But in any case, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.